Hello, welcome to Digital Farm TV Rural News. I'm Andy Walker. A Senate inquiry into the Australian dairy industry kicked off this week as part of an investigation into dramatic cuts this year to farm gate milk prices and contractual fairness. Senators Jackie Lambie and Nick Xenophon co-sponsored a motion last month to form the Senate Economics References Committee inquiry in reaction to supply price cuts by Murray Goulburn and Fonterra. Industry lobby group Australian Dairy Farmers appeared before the new committee to recommend a series of measures to ensure the viability of the dairy industry, according to ABC Rural. ADF President David Basham said the inquiry allowed industry to work with government to lead a collaborative approach to represent all dairy farmers. Listed dairy company Bega Cheese this week suffered a disastrous 17% slump in its share value after revealing its ambitious infant formula milk powder joint venture with vitamin maker Blackmores was staggering. Nearly $200 million was written off the value of Bega Cheese in just six hours of trading as its share price fell 20% from $6.48 to $5.20 before recovering slightly to $5.40. This gave the New South Wales South Coast based dairy business a capitalisation of $990 million. Chairman Barry Irvin told the company's annual meeting the year old joint venture was struggling to achieve predicted sales in China and its inventory value had to be written down by as much as $7 million on Bega's books. Victorian Agriculture Minister Yala Pulford confirmed this week that the state government would provide a $120 bounty to help manage wild dogs in the state. She also announced the re-establishment of a wild dog advisory committee, according to the Weekly Times. The bounty exceeds a $100 reward for wild dog skins offered by the former coalition government. The bounty accounted for 2,104 dogs from 2011 to 2015, but was not continued by the current Labor government. After cutting three producers from its supplier list, milk processor Browns appears to have slashed its farm gate milk price for selected suppliers, according to the West Australian. Scott River dairy farmer Ross Woodhouse said this week the processor had offered him a new price of 45 cents a litre, six cents less than the price he was currently receiving. Ross Woodhouse said he was worried that if he didn't sign up, he would be in a similar predicament to the three producers who lost their supply contracts with Browns this month. Woodhouse, who had built up his dairy operations from 93 milking cows to almost 3,000 in 25 years, said he would be losing money this summer under the new price arrangement. The Australian wine grape industry has entered a red dawn, with prices rising from their 2011 lows particularly for red wine varieties from premium growing regions. Rabobank's wine quarterly report this week predicted further price rises in the near future. The report said life had returned to Australian wine grape prices with China driving much of the recovery that had been more marked in red wine grapes from more premium cool temperate regions. Rabobank analyst Mark Socchio says constrained domestic and global production and the depreciation of the Australian dollar had also underpinned the improvement. Chickpea growers across Queensland and New South Wales need warm, dry weather to reduce the disease risk and ensure reasonable yields in crops that have survived the wetter than average growing season. New South Wales DPI plant pathologist Dr Kevin Moore said that while there had been significant crop losses to waterlogging and flooding across the state, in northern regions many chickpea crops had staged a remarkable comeback. Surprisingly, growers had numerous crops that they thought were devastated, particularly in northern New South Wales and southern Queensland, that were now looking harvestable. Namoi cotton this week foreshadowed the prospect of a surge in Australia's cotton output. The seed to marketing operator said that Australia looked set to produce 4 million bales of cotton this season, a 48% rise year on year. The improved prospects for the crop, which Namoi said was now 50% planted, reflected rains in eastern Australia that have boosted prospects for cotton. The period of wet weather that had existed generally since June had overfilled on-farm and public storages in the southern valleys 
with central and northern areas also having full on-farm storages along with higher allocations from public storages. Well that's it for Digital Farm News this week. I'm looking forward to your company again next week. I'm Andy Walker. Bye.